So today's reality is that, you know, much though we might wish it to be otherwise, that environmental risk assessments usually do not incorporate social or cultural impacts in the same assessment process. Uh, they're generally a single response and they may often only be focused on a single threat footprint. That business risk assessments are generally done differently and use totally different criteria. And uncertainty, as I said in the last session, we generally just play, pay lip service to. What we were told, quite obviously, that iwi and stakeholders wanted was assessments that included multiple stresses, ecosystem components, included indirect effects, and recognised uncertainty. What we were also kind of quite aware of is that a lot of these things underpin a lot of other projects and other themes that we would have going on in the thing. But the emphasis that iwi and stakeholders put on this particular kind of question of risk and uncertainty is the reason why it is a separate theme. The idea that OK, sure, we could do it in bits in all these different places, but if we wanted to kind of have a really um, a really strong addressing of this, making sure that we didn't actually have any gaps in what we were doing, the best thing to do was to pull it out and actually bring it into a theme. So that's what we're going to do. And the other thing is that we need to recognise in that you can't actually separate risk and uncertainty. They kind of like co-mingle with one another most of the time in a really complex way and that they are perceived differently by different people. So the research that we need to do needs to kind of contain the ability to understand how perceptions vary between sectors, locations, cultures, and just about everything else you can think of, to develop the capability to understand the problems that are actually caused by uncertainty. So we need a lot of new theories, we need a lot of new models, particularly ones that can kind of integrate across different types of risk, um, that can look at dynamic changes, that kind of accumulate those, those risks to multiple ecosystem components and um, include that kind of effect of uncertainty. So the overarching question that we came up with, as Chris Cornelson pointed out yesterday, is a really complicated one. And he said, did you write that, Judy? And I said, yes. <laughs> but the really important point is that it, it's kind of we didn't want to rule things out, so the point is that it's actually, we're looking at the effects of climate change, environmental variability and human actions, and not just on ecological health or business risk, we're looking at the effects on ecological health, social and cultural values and the blue economy, and we've got to do that in the background of a lack of environmental data, and actually probably often a lack of social and cultural data as well. So um, these are our main questions um, put in as aims. So kind of developing the methods that underlie those accumulation of risks, developing a, an approach that will actually integrate Mataranga Māori understandings or focus on them, um, develop tools that can demonstrate the consequences of uncertainty and the consequences of uncertainty when they occur in different parts in the decision making process and the risk assessment process. Linking those ecological, social and cultural risks to business risks so that they're not two totally separate components any longer and kind of generating uncertainty on the effect of generating understanding, not uncertainty, on the effect of uncertainty in decision making processes. And one of the important points about that is there is actually um, uncertainty in how a decision is actually going to be made. Sometimes we think we know how it's actually going to be made, and then we find out that at the last minute that it's actually going to be made by a politician. So kind of getting just a handle on, on how the actual decision making process um, runs and how that can affect uncertainty. And that's it.